Welcome everybody to another episode of Hacking Google Slides. I am Ryan O'Donnell and uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Creative EdTech. And in these uh, video series, I'm showing different ways and uh, hacks, tips and tricks to be able to use Google Slides in non-standard presentation type of ways. And so today we're talking about images and transparency or transparent images. And so first off, I'd like to talk a little bit about what images are, image types. And you can see here, there's basically three image types which most um, people are uh, use and may be familiar with. I wanted to do a quick little, here's a quick little uh, rundown what each of them are. You have a GIF, a ping, and a, sorry, a GIF, a JPEG, and a ping. Uh, first off, GIF, it's got like, first off, let you know there's like a huge debate about the pronunciation for it. I'm not going down that road. I call it a GIF. And so I'm moving on from there. Um, and each of these uh, have different aspects or characteristics and uh, behave differently. And so um, here's a quick little rundown of each of them. First off, why you would possibly want to be able to use a GIF. A GIF is designed primarily for logos or images or things that you have flat color, no gradients. And why is that is because a GIF was one of the earlier uh, uh, file types that images could be created. And it only allows you a limited number of colors to pick from. So 256. Now that sounds like a lot of crayons if you had like a crayon box of colors, but that's not necessarily the amount of colors that we see with human eyes. So 256 is very limiting. So you don't have a lot of um, colors to pick from. And if you see images that are often very blocky, and jagged, that, that, that is uh, possibly a, an image that is a GIF. Why would you possibly want to be able to use a GIF? Well, one, the file types are very small, but uh, the, the, the other issues is that they're also very clean, means that things are either one color or another. They're white or red or black or green, and you don't have necessarily a lot of bleeding or uh, bl uh, uh, blending between one to another. So good for logos. The other thing that makes them very popular nowadays is the idea that they're being, uh, they've had a resurgence of uh, animated GIFs. And these are the ones that can kind of loop. And you see these uh, all the time. They're becoming more and more popular. And so these um, images that loop every like two, three, four, five seconds or something like that. So GIFs and animated GIFs. And I'll show you uh, those in a second. The one that we're probably most familiar with are JPEGs. JPEGs primarily are used for photographs, and that is because instead of 256 uh, colors, you're going to have over 16 million colors um, to be able to pick from. So that gives you like the, uh, the, the colors of blue in the sky. If you think about it, it's just not one color. There's millions and millions of different shades, and so that's what JPEGs allow you to do. But they're bad for using logos because now you're going to have that blending. And if you think about it, like if you've ever seen like a mosaic, the farther away you get from a mosaic, it makes it becomes clearer. The closer up you get, you start to see uh, the jagged shapes. And that's kind of what a, a, a JPEG's like. Uh, you, your eyes are, are relatively uh, not super close. And all of those, mo uh, like those mosaic tiles, they're pixels, those tiny little pixels. Um, are uh, different shades. And so JPEGs are used for photos. And then the last one is this interesting one, um, sort of the newest of the bunch, which is kind of a mix of the two. It, um, it's called a ping, and a ping allows uh, for very kind of clean lines, uh, but it also allows for uh, many, many more color types than the, than the GIF did. So if you have something that you want to be able to um, have a graphic where I have lots of colors, but also maybe some images, a ping may work for you. And so let me show you an example here. I'm going to use Coca-Cola uh, to be able to show you three good examples of why you would possibly want to be able to use one for each. You can see the GIF here. There's 256 colors and in the coke logo i only need two colors it's called black i'm sorry it's red and white now if you would zoom way in you're not going to see as many harsh or jagged lines that separate the white to the to the red the jpeg is great for images like this here the coke uh, out of a vending machine you can see there's lots of different colors in here as as you see uh the picture is clear and then it goes blurry in the corner and so lots of different shades and that's what we um, we see with jpegs and then here's a good example of a ping you can see this is uh, a, a a graphic where i want more than necessarily just the white and the red i want to see some shading in the coke can and so forth, um, and that's why a ping would be very good. And then last uh, part that a ping is really interesting for, which is gonna be a focus of today, is this thing called transparency. All images that you see are going to be in some sort of a square or rectangle shape, but sometimes you don't necessarily want that showing up on your, um, um, 
uh, on whatever you're doing. So in Google Slides, I may want to put a picture in, but I don't want to be able to see that line around it. I want it to be a different shape. And so we're going to get into transparency for a second. But first off, let's talk about GIFs and how to be able to search for them. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to a slide I'm going to play around with here. You can see this one, which is about um, um, uh, a little background of the nature scene here. And I'm going to go to Google and I'm going to search for butterfly. But instead of just butterfly, I'm going to type in the word animated. And now when I click on my search, I can say, okay, show me uh, butterf animated butterfly images. Now here's the thing. These are animated or they could be animated. Google will bring you back... Um, images that are animated, but they don't show them in the preview. You have to click on them to be able to see if they are, if they are or are not animated. Most likely they will be. But let, so let me click on the second one here and let's see what it looks like. All right, so now it, I see it is moving. This is a nice little one. And then the other key piece, we're going to get to this later, is see this checkerboard in the back? That means it is transparent, which means you are not going to see this. Even though the image is a, is a square, you are not going to see all the checkerboard stuff. All right, so watch two different ways I can get this in here. You're probably familiar with this, right? Right-click, copy. Let me go back to my presentation uh, to Google Slides and hit paste. And there it is. But you see a problem? I can resize it and move it around and do all that stuff, but that butterfly is not moving. Because when you copy and paste, you're going to lose the animation piece of it. So note to self, if you want an animated GIF in there, you do not want to copy and paste. So I'm going to delete that. I need to go back over here and do this. I need to right click and save the image. I'm gonna save this thing, remember the name of it, Butterfly One. Now when I go back over to my Google Slides, I'm gonna to go to Insert an Image. I'm gonna go Browse and Find which image I want. And here is Butterfly. Now when I upload and put this into it, let's watch the magic here. And there is now my animated Butterfly and he will continue to move around. Um, as long as this is this slide is up and you can see I can change the size which is nice you can even rotate okay now once it's in here watch this I can go to here copy and what happened now I hit paste and now I have two butterflies change the size rotate it and so now I can create a different scene now that animation will be the same so you may think you want to do more and more and more of these things but they'll always be in that same loop Anyway, so let me delete those, but that's animated GIFs, okay? Um, also a nice feature too in Google, when you go search, let's say if I just search for butterfly and not animated, I could go to search tools. This is a great tip in Google, and now you can see another bar that shows up. I can change, hey, what size, what color, like only bring me back orange-ish butterflies. That's a nice one, but also under type, they even have delineated and made it easy for you to search for animated. So searching for orange butterflies that are animated. And when I click on them, let's see if this works. Let's see if something here is animated. Perfect. So that's a, that's a neat little tip there. All right, so let's go back to our presentation. I want to talk about the use of um, uh, looking for transparent images, particularly in, retard, uh, in regards to um, looking for pings, the PNG. So I'm going to go back to my Google search here. And now I'm going to pick something. I'm going to type in schoolhouse. I'm going to get an image of a schoolhouse. Now, when I click on here, it brings back, we're familiar how to do an image search, right? So let's say I want to be able to take the, let's say take a look at this image. Great. Here's my schoolhouse. I'm going to copy this, put it back over into my nature scene. And when I paste it, I want you to be able to see this is the issue. As I resize and put the schoolhouse in here, this is the issue about transparency. I got this nice scene. I want a schoolhouse to be on top of it, but I have all of this white. And that white um, really kind of takes away from the particular image. So it'd be nice if I can have a graphic without this. So I'm going to delete this guy. Let's go back over to our search results. This time I'm going to, to modify my search results and I'm going to write the word transparent schoolhouse transparent and see what we get hard to tell much like the animated ones uh, until we click on them and be able to see them a little bit more so now i clicked on this schoolhouse and remember i mentioned that uh, checkerboard pattern this is what i want to be able to see now unlike the butterfly where you had to be able to go to save these ones i can copy so i'm going to right click and copy this uh, schoolhouse i'm going to go back over to my presentation and go to paste now i have my schoolhouse here 
with that transparent background. Now, interesting, it is still, like I said, a rectangle. You just are seeing through that. That's what the checkerboard allows you to do. Then I can move that around and I can do different things here. So let's say I'm gonna be able to go to, and I showed this in an earlier video. Uh, click in a word art. I'm gonna call this back to school. Make this my back to school night slide. Put that on there. Let's change the font a little bit, make it look a little nicer. And here's a fun tip. Let's say if I want this red to match that red, I can just go and change to and guess if it'll be this color. But I have one of my favorite Chrome extensions up here. It's called Color Eye Pick, Color Pick Eyedropper. If I click on that, watch what happens to my mouse. Wherever my mouse goes, up here you'll see the colors will change. Hey, this is that darker green. Here's the lighter green. Whenever I find the color I want, so I want the words back to school to match this exact school red house. Now when I click, it's going to bring up this letter FF00000. That's called the hexadecimal code for that particular color. I'm going to copy that code, turn that off. Now when I go to the back to school here, I can say, okay, give me a color. Instead of picking the ones it gives me, click on custom. Now I highlight the existing hexadecimal code, put the new one in. And now that will match exactly, okay? And from that earlier uh, video that I showed, I'm gonna go copy and paste and create a drop shadow here. If you haven't seen this one, you can check out the other video. Now I'm gonna go like this. And here's my back to school uh, night slide. And um, I'm gonna show you, I did, did one ahead of time to be able to put in here. All right, here's back to school with my name, my room number and my email address where parents can you can reach me, and that's a nice little graphic to be able to create. Uh, I did this again. I wanted to show you another a use of transparency. I went searching for a UFO and put this one on here. To, I'd be able to kind of a neat little thing. Um, if, I'm just, if I want to be able to do some animation, if I bring up my animation pane, you can see here um, I'm animating my UFO to come flying in from the bottom, and I made it very slow. So let's see what this transparent image looks like here as it comes up. Is there life out there? And now when I click, I'm gonna slowly have my transparent UFO come flying in from the bottom. The transparency, transparencies is a really nice tip uh, to be able to make things look kind of neat. And here's a fun way to be able to play with transparencies too for your kids. Check out this one here. I got George Washington down here and I've uh, got a classic image of George and I have put some images that I had already uh, found. And if you notice, as I move them around, you can see that there is no background to them. They are transparent. Then what you can have uh, the kids do is start to, uh, th this is great for your lower uh, grade kids, for them to get, learn to be able to, how to be able to uh, select an object, click it, how to be able to move an object, how to be able to select another one, move it, and then how to be able to grab and resize. So let's see, I'll show them how to grab the corners, mm -hmm. resize, click and move, and they get to be able to play around with dressing up George Washington all by using these transparent images. And even this hat here we can throw on him. Well, that's too small. So again, teaching the kids how to click, hold, grab, and resize. And now we've made George into something a little bit, a little bit more extra special there. And the last one I want to show you is kind of a fun website. Besides just going to Google and searching for um, images, here's a neat one called nobacks.com. Nobacks is, has a, a selection of um, stock images that are all, like you can see here, ping photos, ping images that you can search for. Nature, miscellaneous, you know, you can see all these different sort of things which you can find, insects, food, birds. But I'm, gonna, I'm under here under people, and um, under people, I'm going to go to hands, and I've already got this website uh, set up here. And you can see all of these have, are, uh, have, uh, are stock images which you can use that have that background. So here's one of a hand pointing. I'm going to click on this one, and here it comes. I'm going to right-click and copy that image. Go back to George over here, right-click and paste that. And now here comes this arm that I can now add to George, and we can put this into the image and make it look like George is pointing to something. I can even, there's a little gap right here, but I can draw a shape right in here to be able to color, cover that in black to make it look like George is pointing to something. And I could put, who knows what, the Constitution, Declaration of Independence, or something fun over there. Anyway, so those are some fun tips about how to be able to play with transparency and images. And hope you enjoyed this episode of Hacking Google Slides.